What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Billy Collins. Matt do -do 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 Doge. And this is Magician. And the Jock. Guys, on this episode, we have... <clears throat> Long-time listener, first-time caller. First-time caller. Uh, big fan of uh, this guy. Grew up with him. D-Train. Dot and Knight. Takes my rap name from time to time because you call yourself Dirty D. But, I don't call uh, myself that. Y'all call me that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I do it, and then I get mad at it. So, but no, we got Mr. Dalton Knight in the studio. First time ever on any video. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So you are, we also got young, young Jock young. Lees. Got the uh, producer cam going. He's got his, he's got his shirt. He's very <laughs> tropical. Chris, when, you and Dalton have known each other the longest. When did you, how did you guys first meet? Uh, not entirely sure. I think, well, you and Cam are best friends. Yeah. So I don't remember not knowing Dalton. Yep. Yeah. So our older brothers were really good friends, and um, then my older brother would go stay the night with Matt, and so I'd kind of just tag along, give the parents the house to themselves. Mm hmm And uh, I've stayed many a nights over there and had many a dinner, so. Yeah, good man. Good people. Many a dinners. <laughs> <laughs> many a dinners. Carter, we... Carter County local legend. And why did we have Dalton on today? You know, I was just asking myself that. Question. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, What's why it? again? <laughs> no, and, uh, well, we have Dalton on because one, tremendous athlete. Mm. Used to be. And, you know, he is the, uh, I would almost say, poster child for a small town, big sound, the beginning yeah. of it. Yeah. So, I mean, we. The show is kind of built around, you know, the tendency when you have a podcast or whatever, you're like, we got to find someone that's done something amazing. You know what I mean? They were on American Idol or they have blah, blah, blah. Small town, big sound is, and you, you've talked about that. Everyone's got a story. You know, there's a lot of different perspectives and we are just, we love talking to people that wake up every morning and want to put a dent in the universe. Yep. Whatever that universe is, Dalton's one of those guys So you know, obviously played sports like a lot of uh, our friend group. That's yeah. that's what you did. You hung yeah. out. You played sports around here. You either played sports or you hunted together. But it was always when men get men don't usually get together just to talk. We get together to do something. It's like a pack mentality going out mm -hmm. to hunt. So Dalton was I would, like all of us, played. just like on a Saturday <laughs> night, going out to hunt the old <laughs> Gmail hunting. Um, <laughs> But Dalton, like a lot of us, played every sport, but ex ended up excelling most in baseball, which I think we knew early on. I don't know. I mean, he yeah. played everything, but we were always like, this dude, wait till, you know, he's a lefty. So maybe kind of introduce yourself. Tell tell the listening audience why you are cool. Oh, taking it back all the way. <laughs> but um, I guess so I got into sports. First off, my older brother, he um, he was a big-time surfer. Mm -hmm. So Matt and Chris, they do the surfing as well. So started out doing surfing, then got caught in a bad rip current, and I was like, all right, I'm done surfing. I'm going to go play baseball. <laughs> then, then I started, and I picked up sports, and um, I've always just been one of those ADD kids that had to be going out there, running around, playing a sport. I called but, it, it was athletic ADHD. So as soon as one got done, you were just, yeah, I mean, never want to play soccer so again, let's play basketball. ADD, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you ended up playing uh, college uh, baseball, right? Yeah. Um, started out playing baseball, um, probably fell in love with it um, in Little League, definitely. Um, played with uh, Chris and all the other friends. Uh, what, what Little League? What team were you on? I was on Eastman Carpet. Oh. Yeah, baby. First place every year. Bombers. No, oh. Last place every year. This is on <laughs> last place every year. Bro, I was on Rotary. Did you? Little League was around back then, right? <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. It's been 84 years. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I got to finish back practice. Back in 1932. I got to finish practice so I can go back to the factory. Uh, but no, go back to the farm. I was, on, I was on Rotary. You remember that, Chris? We have a... <clears throat> Our record's never going to be beaten. Oh, and 12. Oh, and 18. Yeah. And they, they cut the season back, I think, to like 15 games or something. So right after, right after your team. Coach was like, like, we can't have these kids going through life like dude, this. Coach John would bring his pack of cigars. Like, these are victory cigars. I'm like, <laughs> well, never been quit smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but so you fell in love with it there. Did you have 
like yeah actually aspirations truth, i probably to... fell in love with it um even before that probably when i was four or five just watching i'd be watching i'd have the braves on tbs and i'd watch all that and then the cubs were on wgn channel same, same dude yeah same. So those are the only channels they had so we watched them <laughs> and then um how about the Braves? How about them Braves? Shoo. Son, I stayed up, watched the whole thing. Had to do that. Yeah. That yeah. was awesome. Dude, that was back. Chipper Jones. Um, Andrew Jones. Who was that? For call. The, line, the, out, the outfielder. Who Greg they Maddox. Andrew Jones. You already mentioned him. Yeah. yeah. I had yeah. to get through the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when did you, um, like we, Chris and I, I mean, we noticed – I mean, first of all, he threw it with his left hand. That's no, no, he didn't throw it. Bad bats left. He did. He did something left-handed, yeah. which in a small town like yeah. he so all my, my dad would always grab me and try and put me yep. over on the right side, and I would just jump back over there on the left. And you play golf left-handed, though, right? Yep, okay. golf and um, golf and baseball. Okay, hitting left-handed, right-handed though. And, and at what point did you? Were you like, hey, I'm. You know, you're making all-star teams, but you're moving up ranks. You know, you're kind of a big fish in a small pond. Right. It's probably like that with Magic. You you talk about going yeah. to American Idol. What point were you like, oh, dude, I'm I'm actually pretty good? Um, probably in little league. I I had a early growth spurt where I was just like <laughs> six foot tall, and maybe I probably didn't hit that growth spurt till I was maybe like thirteen or fourteen, but. I mean, I'd have all my friends hyping me up and stuff, telling me that I was good. So, and I've always had an uh, unbelievable amount of confidence when it came to baseball. <laughs> baseball. <laughs> when it came to baseball, like, I mean, for good reason. Though. I'd go around and I'd hang out with. I mean, I went and played on like big time AAU teams, mm. and during the time, I'd be like, "These guys aren't better than me." But like looking back now, I'm like these guys were way better than. Me. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like during during that time, and even like in college, you just had like a unreal amount of confidence, and that's kind of what helped. Um, even if they are way. better than you, it's like that's not unattainable. You'd never right. admit it. Like on my trajectory, I'll be there one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, Chris, I remember. Didn't you used to always say like, yeah, Dalton went. I don't know if this is true or not, but like, yeah, Dalton went to the doctor. They said he's going to be like 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. You know that? that was actually a true story. <laughs> they said that to every kid, every tall kid. Uh, uh, I was, like, was going to be 5'10". Be... Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I remember that. We would brag on that. They're like, Dalton's going to be 6'6". Six, six. Just, mm-hmm. just yeah, Still wait. <laughs> still growing. But you ended up playing, um, well, you obviously played ball at West Carter, which is yep. becoming yep. kind of a... I mean, you've got Lonnie Chisenhall, Kim Program, Drew Paul. Yeah, it's very. When I was there. You were there. Uh, no, I'm saying when I was there, we had oh, Polk and Lonnie. Yeah. I mean, there were some good dudes. So I actually got to during that time frame. Um, I actually would go get and sit. I would sit in the dugout and watch those games, and that was probably at the point where I was like, "All right, I am all in." Yeah. I mean, I was probably all in way before, but I but actually there, got there to was see, no doubt at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to see. Um, I was sitting in the dugout probably in seventh grade, and I saw Alex White yeah. hit and Lonnie. Mm-hmm. He was at D.H. Um, Conley. D.H. Conley, so yeah. he went and pitched for the Rockies for a couple of years. He was first rounder, right? Uh, I'm not sure. He was, But he was yeah. up there. I remember th- – wasn't that in the playoffs? But that is a cool thing about going um, – yeah, playoffs. Dude, remember playing. how many radar guns there were? And that <laughs> Lonnie was – what it was like two to nothing – one, like, yeah, or so, like Alex White, like hit a, time. yeah, like he hit a home run. That was the difference. Yep. So that's when you. It's almost like the little Pop Warner kids wearing their pads to the high school game yeah. and just picturing themselves. That, yeah. yeah. Being that that top level. So you also played for the Marlins, mm-hmm. correct? For yeah. well, Morehead City Marlins. Not. Uh, so how did you get? You were in college, and I guess they recruit for through mm-hmm. the college, mm-hmm. or did you have to apply for it, or how did that work? <laughs> so. Actually, I, I kind of lucked out in that situation because uh, the CPL, which is like the Coastal Plains League, that's um that's a premier yeah. league. It's probably top. Uh, I mean, I would, I think anybody's gonna say that it's in the top three leagues in the world, but everyone says probably the Cape Cod League and then the CPL and the Northwoods leagues are about the same. And these are wood bat leagues. Difficult leagues, yeah. Yeah. In difficulty, but um, so the Marlins um. They had been around for maybe one or two seasons, and um, I knew Buddy Bingle through just the whole organization. 
and um, I kind of didn't want to go get shipped off and play somewhere else. That's a big thing. <laughs> I know where I live. Ian Byron, yeah. who lives next door to me, he uh, always, every year he's players. got two two players. Two players, yeah. I mean, you're essentially like going off to college for the yeah. summertime. Yeah. So you play a whole season, which is about 55 games. You're extremely worn out, and then you go straight into the summer ball league, and yeah. it is it is extremely difficult. Yeah. But um, so they offered me my freshman year. They offered me a temp temp job, just to be a temporary temporary player until um, the players that you actually had signed show up. Right. And so I came there and um, just put a bunch of good good at bats together, and they just kept me around for the summer. This dude's and hit, actually, this um, dude's hitting dingers. Now. Yeah. Right. Hey, you left hand Morehead. That's that. So our that's coach, you've heard of. Our coach actually, my first season was Brian McRae, oh. and he uh, he played center field for the Royals for probably. 10 12 years and his dad was the coach for the royals so it was a pretty cool experience you look back on it, you're like man that's awesome yeah i mean it, mm-hmm. to, to get for a lot of athletes i can remember going into my senior year um our special teams coordinator because in college your coaches have all the power in the world you right. know they talk there it's it's kind of a weird <laughs> you know mm-hmm. um I guess in a sense it's like that in high school, whether or not they talk to coaches for you. But he, I remember I walked in before my senior year and he's like, Hey man, you got a shot. Like, and just him telling, just getting poured into by somebody who's been there, who's told that to other players mm-hmm. who ended oh, up no, playing. It's like it's talked into existence at that point. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you mm-hmm. like to get compliments, but you're, you're all, your mom's always going to tell you you're the best ever. Yeah. But when you hear someone that's like, Hey, I've been there, I've seen the best and you've got it. Or you've you've got enough of it, mm-hmm. which I'm. Was it like that for you? I mean, it's, you got to take his word for it. I mean, he played in the show for a while. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he never said that to me. Or nothing, <laughs> <but> <laughs> if, you, if he did, I would have sold. I would have sold y'all. But I mean, he did. Like you said, it was temporary. Did it go into? Um, yeah. So then I just uh, did the whole summer with him. Yeah. Had a good summer. I mm-hmm. mean, I, and I was young too, facing mm-hmm. um, facing some really good competition so i mean i struggled definitely definitely struggled that first summer Mm. and um yeah did that help you as as far as the college ball i mean Um, to play with somebody with the caliber i mean because obviously it's the best of the best in the college right yeah absolutely it's it's um it's kind of a different game when it's like a 50 game all-star team pretty much because you got guys from all pretty much but i mean it it takes a lot of um chemistry and working together to get on the same page because i mean you've never met these guys i mean you're rooming with people that you've never met before Mm. and then um yeah so the second summer played with them as well and i mean throughout the whole thing just met a ton of awesome people so i mean if you run into somebody like anybody i run into i'm probably gonna be like oh well i know this guy he played baseball there so yeah you can always make connections fraternity man it's a small world but so that's that's during the summer that's summer ball but you're playing where did you talk about your college foot not football college baseball Uh uh-huh how how was that recruiting process like how did you come to pick the team that you eventually went to (laughs) yeah well um recruiting really didn't go great in high school i kind of every time i'd go play summer ball i was dealing with injuries and stuff like that with i always break my ankle playing basketball or something like that never hurt never hurt myself on baseball mm-hmm. field but thanks chris always playing, basketball playing games love 20, basketball 21 football, tips mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> but yeah and um so i talked with uncw for a little bit about possibly going there and that didn't pan out So it was kind of getting down to the wire, and I had a couple different JUCOs that were um, offering me. So I was like, man, I don't really know where I want to go right now. And um, so then I went up to Lewisburg, and Lewisburg was in Raleigh. It was a cool area. And I was like, all right, well, if I got to go to a JUCO, I think I'm going to go there. So... Oh, you did do JUCO? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No, okay. I didn't. Got it. Got it. We might have to cut this out. I don't want to be talking bad about... No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. No. <laughs> All right, but um, they probably won't hear it. <laughs> but, um, hey, man. Actually, one there. of my... Uh, the assistant coach... Actually, the coach for D.H. Conley called... Um, Pembroke called him was like, Hey, do you know of any good catchers in the area? And um, D.H. Conley coach called me. He was like, Hey, man... Um, 
there's a couple colleges that are going to be looking at you. Um, UNC Pembroke's probably going to call you tonight. And I was like, all right, cool. So um, the guy that called me, I won't say his name, but he had the craziest list. And, that, <laughs> and, I, and all, my, all my college friends who, are, uh, who may be listening to this, they'll know exactly this story of who I'm talking about. And um, so he called me. He's like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> Is it Mike Tyson? He's like, is this Dalton Knight? I thought the same thing, Chris. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I kind of told him what my recruiting process and stuff was, and he was like, uh, I was like, well, I kind of was waiting out to see if I could go somewhere else. And then um, I told him where I was going to be going, and he was like, oh, man, we beat those guys 22 to nothing. <laughs> he said, we beat them 22 to nothing. I was like, all right, well, Captain maybe I'll come. Captain Estheno shows on Moisey. Maybe I'll come check y'all out. <laughs> and so then I showed up. I showed up to Pembroke. Not many people know about Pembroke, but it's an Indian reservation. Yeah, okay? Lumbee Indians. The Lumbee Indians. And it is a different world out there, for sure. So I showed up, and, um, I mean, it had to – it's – that's the hottest place in North Carolina as well, for sure. You can just see your breath on a summer day. But um, I showed up there, and it was probably a hundred. It was probably a hundred and ten degrees, and he's like the coach. Co- all the coaches came out, <clears throat> and I actually walked around into the visitors' dugout by accident because I didn't know what the visitors' or homes was, and a bee stung me. <laughs> A bee flew down and stung me right in my ear. It was either a bee or a wasp. So I'm meeting my college coaches for the first time, and I just got stung by a bee in my ear. They're like, send the healer. We and need then the I healer. Got, and then they're like, well, we got a pitcher. We got a pitcher here who's going to be uh, who's th- who needs to throw a bullpen. And so I was being recruited as a catcher. So I caught the bullpen. <laughs> with a wasp stung, stung in my ear too. Yeah. Like, don't tell anyone. Yeah. Drenching okay, sweat. Okay, so I did that. Caught the bullpen, probably 20 minutes, then went and hit for another 20 minutes. And both the coaches were like, hey, uh, yeah, go clean up and then come into our office. And I didn't have any other clothes. <laughs> so oh. I'm like, I look like I jumped in a pool. I'm just drenched in sweat. Yeah. So I go in there and he's got like a suede couch with like a cover with like a blanket cover on it. And I'm just dripped swamp ass sitting on his couch <laughs> it just left like a huge thing but um i mean really really kind of fell fell in love with the coaches i mean that so was like a trial was, essentially yeah he was just checking me out got it i mean heard heard about me and just wanted to check me out and um their program was they had they've had like 10 30 win seasons in a row so you're going to like a you're going to a big time baseball community like in the middle of nowhere in the middle of nowhere that happens to attract <laughs> some beasts yeah yeah and the the i had an awesome time at pembroke i loved it <laughs> just uh just meeting all my uh college baseball friends and stuff they were all so similar to me and uh and the whole community just um loves baseball yeah so you're not i mean you're not you're not gonna have many issues with the community as long as you're not acting stupid out there yeah sweat on people's couches yeah yeah those lovey indians are not little people no no y'all fit in pretty well though yeah i fit in pretty well <laughs> didn't, didn't you say there was like a um i remember learning about this there they was, were riding horses down the highway they had that, the highway, but, she, but what at 18 each indian native american receives a certain like a check from the federal government or something like that and there was you said Dude, they just the jacked largest... up trucks and Mustangs and just like every 18, like a didn't you talk about like a lot of the dealership? A lot, a lot of Mustangs. Yeah. Definitely. That's, that is crazy. I'm glad it's going to good use. Um, but so you played, um, you played all four years. Mm-hmm. Did you, ha- well, when did you, when did you start catching? I decided that I wanted to catch in middle school. Really? Yeah. Seventh grade. I was like, all right, I'm just going to be the catcher. Mike Piazza fan? Yeah, huh. yeah, sure, sure. It's the only catcher I can think. Him and Johnny Bench, <laughs> the greatest. You dog. got who's the best catcher? Mm-hmm. Yadier Molina. 
Yadier Molina or Pudge. Oh my God, I used uh, to love watching him yeah. throw the ball back to the pitcher like I mean, nine I mean, miles an hour. <laughs> you remember that, don't you, Chris? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, Little League played, pitched, and played shortstop. I pitched throughout um, throughout high school as well, so pitched and caught. Yeah, it's and, uh, I mean, Then went to college my first two seasons. Coach didn't like me as a catcher, but I just started hitting and hitting and hitting and he was like all right well we gotta we're not we don't want to put you at catcher but you got to be in the lineup right no so, dh is there no we dh uh, so i dh'd um freshman and sophomore year and then um played first for the rest of the time Dalton got thick <laughs> his yeah. sophomore year yeah he got the exact definition of a dh my girlfriend was the food hall <laughs> <laughs> We have to find that picture and put yeah. it up right yeah. now. But oh, yeah, man. it's like, how am I gaining weight and I can't stop sweating? Like, yeah. what is <laughs> it's the hottest place on earth. That definitely happened. What was that uh, movie? This is the end, where they're like, yeah. 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 you're the only one that's going to gain weight after the uh, apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you did you have aspirations of obviously, you know, life? We talked about this on another show. Like your life is really. Um, chronological starting out right mm-hmm. first grade goes to second mm-hmm. to third you you know pop warner to middle school to high school to hopefully college to the pros um was that the goal um yeah For, i mean absolutely the goal was to um go play professional baseball but um kind of comes to a point where you realize that hey that's not that's not going to be my future and then you just got to adapt and figure out something else. Yeah. And I was mean, there a sense of disappointment when you realized um, that so, moment? Not so much. I mean, I was kind of, I was grateful for the amount of time that I got to play. And, um, you weren't, delu- there, there are a lot of baseball I wasn't, guys yeah. that are delusional that I can still play. And we talked about baseball is one of those, cause you probably could have. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, th- those guys that go play the next level, minors, they, they yeah. may have like, they may have like one more little thing than this person. I mean, that doesn't make them better than that person by any means, but they just got the luck of the draw. And... But, but it's one of those weird sports like football. You, you know. used to have NFL football, Europe, you know. but, but it was NFL or nothing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. There's There wasn't farm leagues. There's have been all these other maybe arena or Canadian football, but – XFL. Yeah, and there's there's guys that um, there's come not out like, of that successfully. Th- there are, but, yeah. I mean, you they're in baseball, you have farm leagues, right? You, you yeah, play the indie ball. I signed with the Cubs, but yeah. you're – You're going to what, what are single the, A, double A, triple A. What are the different divisions? So you got independent ball, which is professional baseball, but it's not affiliated with uh, certain major league organizations. But um, so you got rookie ball, um, single A ball, double A ball, triple A ball, and then that's where you get to. And then you can go play overseas as well. So I mean, so if you wanted to, you could probably still be playing, right? I mean. I I got a buddy who played college ball and he has a little thing called baseball and business and it deals with oh. there was a a problem he was seeing which was guys you know kind of chasing to get in the show played minor ball for 10 11 12 years mm-hmm. which they essentially lived the life of a pro pro, pro baseball player but were getting <laughs> paid mm-hmm. I mean it comes out to almost minimum wage living on activity buses and you know they turn 30 and they go into the workforce and they've never had a you know a job outside of baseball mm-hmm. maybe they're like lost. bouncing or something like that yeah and it takes time for sure i mean a lot of my friends have gone through that as well but yeah so i mean it, it could be what what point were you like as an athlete you you are so honed into your sport just like as a magician you're so honed into your mm-hmm. craft this is what i like if i don't make it it's not going because i was distracted right right well i think i always um kind of looking back on it I'd always tell myself like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a college baseball player I'm gonna be a college baseball player I never told myself I'm gonna be going and playing professional baseball I just I don't know maybe I um just had different aspirations I mean it doesn't mean I didn't want to but it wasn't the end all be all yeah it was kind of just icing on the cake because I know I mean the chances kind of weren't good in my position because I played a corner infield position and I hit more so for average rather than power so i mean if you're if you're playing first base in college and you're wanting to get drafted you better put up like 
you got to put up 60 RBIs, probably 15 home runs. Yeah. Consecutively. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you yeah. got to do that in your you got to do that in your college, then you got to go to summer ball and do that and keep that keep that rolling. Cuz you're not really known for your fielding. I mean, obviously catching when someone throws someone out at yeah. first, but it's not like a shortstop or a second mm-hmm. baseman. That's that's um you know, it's funny what you mentioned going to college. Chris, do you remember when Bubba Watson won the Masters? Yes, I was talk, in college. I remember that. They yes. talked to him about, like, did you dream of this? And he said, I never made it this far in my dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which oh, that wow. was, like, when he said that, um, it, it is so true. There are the rare Peyton Mannings, and Eli, mm-hmm. they're in, they have videos in their backyard when they're yeah. eight and wearing, you know, whatever jersey they had. Yeah. They, it was kind of written in the stars. Yeah, definitely. For most of us, it's like, hell, I would love to, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and, like, degrade how yeah. hard it is to actually make it. Right, right. Yeah, and that's kind of kind of the position I took. I kind of – I understood that maybe I'm – I probably don't have the tools that is going to get me drafted to go play. And kind of from the start, I told myself I'm not going to go play indie ball. So – I was just, I mean, I, uh, so you were, you were kind of lucky because others will hold on to it yeah, a little definitely, bit farther, but you definitely. were like, you saw the writing and you're mm-hmm. like, you know what? Let's switch gears mm-hmm. and then absolutely change the course of, let's talk, so let's talk about that. You know, life is a series of, I'm a former this and current mm-hmm. this, and eventually I'll be a former, whatever I am now in a future. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's really tough. We just started that show fully vetted, and we talked yeah. about how military becoming a veteran. That's essentially I'm a former soldier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, well, what the hell are you now? Yeah, is it changing your uniform? I'm a former being... athlete. What am I current at now? So we're gonna backtrack a little bit because we do want to get into the entrepreneurial side of of Dalton Knight's career. But you have a couple, not only baseball. You played football. As mm-hmm. well in high school, mm-hmm. uh, defense, right? Defense Linebacker? and offense and kicker. Yep. There you go. Does it all? Man, we're not Charlotte Independence, man. You got to play. <laughs> yeah. play both ways here, baby. <laughs> Look, I played double A, so I, I, I played everything yeah. I could. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but uh, do you have any cool stories of? What do you miss most about high school football? Oh man, <laughs> um, don't pretend like you don't miss. Surprisingly, it. Um, obviously the game days were. Just so much fun. And um, I think we were successful because I kind of didn't mention this earlier, but all of, like we're kind of in a little area, you know, and so all the athletic kids know each other. We all played, we played bat, we played upward basketball together, we played little league together. Yeah. We've been on the same team since we were five years old. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of us, especially y'all. I mean, I'll talk to Chris about that. Y'all's friend group. Yeah, we y'all are still every crazy sport. close. That's not yeah. normal. That's yeah. not how mine is. Like yeah, very, yeah. with you and, guys, um, you guys still all hang out. Mm-hmm. So just we play as rowdy. Is this a call for help right now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a good thing. You gotta keep your friends close. That's yeah, right. mm. but yeah, you guys were extremely close. But um, and then we meshed with Newport um, after middle school. And um, that's a weird. We just time. had a really good, um, good football program from the start. And well, you guys we, had some some like studs on there. I mean, you had yeah, Young me. Jock was quarterback. <laughs> you were off there. quarterback in the state. CJ Strutt, who went on to play at East, yeah, uh, ECU. We had John John, John. John. He went to Methodist. We had um, Mike Johnson, and we had a really good line. So I mean, we had mm-hmm. both had um, both of our. Uh, running backs had over two thousand yards. So if you're doing that in high school, well, yeah, I don't know if impressive. Mike did. We don't gotta get him. Maybe close. close. Yeah, but they we'll get him to. We'll get him two thousand. You're damn right. We'll, we'll get him uh... Was it weird for you guys? I still remember first day JV practice when oh, the kids yeah. from Newport came over, and those were like rivals growing. Up. I remember John Nows and those like Brad Camp. I was like, I ain't playing with that. Oh my lord! I got it. Actually, right. it was bizarre. I remember. Yeah. We'll go back to my first day of uh, middle school football. <laughs> I had hyped the coaches okay. up so, so much. That guy's like Dalton's super athletic. He's gonna be really good at football. He's gonna be six six yeah, one day. Yeah, he's really <laughs> good. <laughs> so I've never. I just played like I played football never with pads or helmets on though. And um, so get out there. I'm in seventh grade, and I remember I'm like, damn, this helmet is really heavy. <laughs> it's just hurting my neck. 
So, uh, and then I had that big ass helmet with a chin strap. I had that cloth chin strap. Uh, and uh, I've never played football a day in my life. And uh, that first day, the, first um, day is hitting drills. <laughs> and um, everybody's like, uh, all right, he's going first. So Ruben Simmons pops up there. And he's a grown man at the age of at, at the age of eighth grade, who I didn't understand was gonna go. He was gonna score every single touchdown for us that season. <laughs> so nobody stepped up to uh, do the Oklahoma drill with him. So I was like, "Well, shoot, I ain't scared. I'll get up there. <laughs> I got this jock strap <laughs> Get up there." And uh, so we're both like head to head, laying on our backs, blow the whistle. By the time I get up. His hel- the top of his helmet is right in the bottom <laughs> of my chin strap, and I'm bleeding. Before you had this the luscious beard. Yes, yeah. before the beard. And so that was my first um, uh, first ever football practice. So you, didn't and play, you didn't play Pop Warner? No, skipped Pop Warner, played soccer. And we had a, I mean, around here we had a very good soccer program as well. Was it Riptides and stuff? Uh, We were the Hurricanes. Got it. So, still, yeah. still dangerous Hurricanes, to swim in. baby hey related yeah. 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 yeah same you guys were the source yeah so same. yeah going back to it all of us um played um played a ton of sports with each other and then um we went on to have successful football um high school careers well, but um, you know if you would have played when i played we have leather helmets it wouldn't have hurt you as bad exactly mm. yeah that probably would have been beneficial for me that was before desegregation so mm-hmm. billy was I was, Billy's the best player out there. <laughs> I was the, yeah, I was the fastest one. <laughs> uh, but so any so what do you miss? You miss most just game day, hanging out in the. Uh, I mean, it was hard to focus on Friday. Oh, dude, you didn't focus. Oh, on there Friday. was no Friday was game day. Friday, Friday, Friday had nothing to do. When when did the uh, whole atmosphere of it? I mean, it's just high. school. You guys had some shenanigans for like being the top, some of the top athletes in the school. The pep rallies were pretty funny. <laughs> oh, the what did ride you, the bikes. We don't have to go into all this. Stuff. <laughs> no, I know. Like we were uh, kind of trying to outdo you guys. So like I remember stories like I I saw Matt go to school in a Darth Vader outfit. Okay, time. so yeah, so I'll <laughs> I'll set the stage. We I. Uh, we all met up in like Northwood, where you live now. That used to be where all the boys lived, and we skateboarded and rollerbladed to school. I was in a Darth Vader costume. Poor Frank Ganey was just trying to keep up behind us. And uh, uh, Jake Amphenson mm-hmm. had a grilling apron that, when you lifted it up, there was like a ten inch oh my God, cock stuck great. out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, dude, the day I wore that ba- that uh, Darth Vader was what was it called, Baccalaureate or something? Remember that? No, it's uh, Homecoming Week. No, but so when I did it, it was like baccalaureate practice or whatever. It's like the religious know. side of the graduation yeah, ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know. Gotcha. We did gotcha. the practice and I was in the Darth Vader. <laughs> so that was what I did. Now, Chris. I know, and I'll, and I'll set the stage. So Dalton and I, sophomore year. But like the pep, the pep rallies we had weren't quite as cool. Like y'all went on the street and did whatever. Like through the fair throughout downtown Moorhead. But I know ours was like shopping carts in the... <laughs> it was a terrible idea. It was in the auditorium. But I remember we won our sophomore year. And the whole thing was like, we had a cardboard thing, but we were playing West Craven who, I don't know if they won state or went to the state final. We got our ass beat. Oh my night. Lord. But like the... They lost the, in the state championship. Yeah, but the pep rally. <laughs> Y'all won. Like, yeah, so, so they're the Eagles. Right, so we're like, how do we beat the Eagles? So I, I'm in the <laughs> shopping cart, like, and they taped. Uh, oh we God, found like plants it. in the school, like the fake plants. They taped those, so I had like wings. <laughs> so <laughs> I hop out. So I hop out, and like uh, my cousin's also a swimmer, All right? And that will come into play in a second. But so I, so I hop out of the shopping cart, and Dalton's like looking around, middle of the auditorium. And I had my like gym shorts on, but underneath I had my cousin's like really flowery speed up yeah. oh on. God. And so I like fake hit Dalton and he ducks, ducks and points. And I look and he shanks me in the whole school. I cannot believe <laughs> that we did that. And we won. All right. So fast forward to senior year. <laughs> and then we right? lose like 63 to nothing against what's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I remember. It's like Newburn's half brother. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I remember yeah. that 
that game dropping back and being like, they got 10 people out there. Yeah. <laughs> like, very the, athletic. Hit the one in the middle. Seriously, very <laughs> athletic. But the night, the Thursday night leading into Friday, which was game day, Dalton comes to me, and we're making like the cardboard. We're trying to recreate what we did to win. And uh, Dalton's like, dude, I have a great idea. <laughs> and comes that down with never two of his, ends right. He comes down with Trust two of his dad me. whitey tidies. <laughs> 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 and I look at him, I, he didn't say anything else. FBI, I was like, yes, we're FBI doing that. issued whitey tidies. And yeah. and I'll give this over to Dalton in a second, but I, I just remember. <laughs> we'll let you sell it. I'm gonna let you finish. I'm, a little, embarrassed. With, I'm a little embarrassed by it. But. So I wore his dad's whitey tidies as well as him because I couldn't fit in diesels, but. but <laughs> <laughs> He's a large man. Diesel ain't hurt. No, diesel ain't hurt. And uh, so we did that. The next morning, Dalton picks me up in the old F-150. Yeah. And so we drove to this place that was a little further away than the school. It's about Swinton but, Park. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like the, whatever the bike ride, or I don't even remember really what that was. Mm-hmm. But I remember Dalton was so excited when he drove in and like parked. He forgot to put the truck and park. Yeah. And so he like goes to hop out and the truck's like, just, <laughs> <laughs> like and so he parks and we're like, hell yeah. It's you know, my nightmare. I don't want to take up too much time. <laughs> that shit was so dangerous. But so no, you rode bikes. Yeah. Yes. And where I rollerbladed in Darth Vader, you're like, well, what up? We're going to ride bikes in our underwear. And you Why cons- cons- specifically? consequently had to sit out a half or something like that. What did, when they were punished? He sat out the but, first quarter. Yeah, but before that, like Dalton's talking to the police officers directing traffic because unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> the, the primary school is right before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's like us in trouble. It's all the parents, all the all the primary school parents calling me like, hey, yeah. they got these kids running around in whitey tidies, but uh, his trucks just. <laughs> Free truck is rolling go, down go <laughs> country club road yeah yeah, but, yeah I, I just remember dalton was talking to the police officer and i'm like trying to put my jersey on because like we're also no shirt on yeah but uh in your, in your <laughs> and own then, shirt okay so we got the way we are. got to the high school and um then we like shit we left our clothes <laughs> so we gotta get back <laughs> so we hop back on the bikes and start riding back and i'm probably 100 yards ahead He's really uh, fast. I'm probably 50 yards ahead of Chris. <laughs> and the cop stops me and... Uh, it was Justin. It was Justin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool guy. Couldn't be a better cop. Yeah, yeah it couldn't be a better cop. He came He came over there and talked to me. He's like, oh, boys, what y'all doing? <laughs> He's like, he said, he said, are you Dalton Knight? And I was like, yep. He said, is that Chris Dodge? <laughs> And I looked back and Chris was like, chain, no, no, no. Chain had fallen off back. the bike. Chris fell. <laughs> Chris had fallen off the oh, bike. Man, I hit the curb hard. And I was like, I was like, yes, sir. He said, Y'all ain't playing tonight. Oh. He said, Y'all ain't playing tonight. Oh, but uh, so we sat out the first quarter. The coaches were extremely pissed. Mm-hmm. And um Y'all learn your lesson, I'd get out there. We're getting killed. <laughs> my dad had no clue of it. Supposedly he found out when he was walking into the game. Miss uh the principal. Oh, we won't name drop. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> no name dropping. She was free balling because he didn't have any clean underwear. <laughs> She's She's free balling. Like, Where'd was, you know? There's a booty bandit out there. Yeah, it's just something. I mean. Okay, next subject. <laughs> dude, high school. Just the energy that you get around your boys. Like, well, let's just. Who cares? Like, your world is so small at that point. I don't know, man. I mean, I miss it like crazy. Oh, it's, well, yeah, that's wild. And the the whole why we brought that up is because that almost, that ties into your first adventure into the entrepreneur world mm-hmm. because you and mm-hmm. Chris had your uh, landscaping business. Mm-hmm. Don't be humble, Billy. You came up with the name. What was the name? <laughs> Varsity Landscaping. <laughs> yeah. oh, Billy right. Care, yeah. Oh, yeah, I like it. So it was actually unnamed for a while, but um, <laughs> it was. Hey, can we mow your grass? All right, <laughs> yeah. that's a great name. Like, hey, hey, we're gonna mow your grass. Well, there before I know, before we could drive, like this was a big merger in Moorhead City. <laughs> like before we could drive, we both did our own neighborhoods. Yeah, you know. What? Yeah. So then Dalton had the truck and everything. So we're like, let's just combine it and knock it out together. Mm-hmm. You know, big yeah. merger, big business. Made it happen. That, yeah. that is, I mean, on a on a serious note. They look at billionaires and 
they took a bunch of them or just super wealthy people that made it in entrepreneurialism and they all had like a common trend in their life and for the, in this case they all had a paper route now we didn't have paper routes right. really coming up but yeah. they did right. something mm -hmm. like a paper route or mowing lawns i, I was the same way i yeah i had no expenses so Got i'd go start, up yeah. I'd be like, "Hey, how much do you charge? How much do you ch does that guy charge? Twenty five. I'll do it for fifteen. You know, because I didn't have to pay for gas or anything. Right. And you kind of get that entrepreneurial bug. And then fast forward to today. So tell tell people what you got going on today, because you've kind of got two <clears throat> two streams of income. Multiple. That we know of. Multiple. <laughs> He's doing well. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. I work out at, um, I have a federal job out at Cherry Point, so I won't, I won't say too much about that. It's kind of top secret, <laughs> but, um, he knows where the bodies are buried. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but I've actually started a pressure washing business. Um, once I got out of college, I, um, grew up, um, doing landscaping and mowing lawns and all that stuff. Started out really young and, um, then kind of just one day I kind of got a, I don't know, something just hit me weird that I'm like, man, I'm over mowing grass. I'm just over it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave this to somebody else. And uh, it was honestly bickering with some guy over like 20 and $25. Mm. So at that point, I'm like, all right, I'm done mowing grass. I'm going to leave this to somebody else. But started mowing grass actually um, when I was about eight years old. Um, a guy down the street, this is a pretty funny story actually. He's, uh, his name was Mr. Simerson. Probably 90, 95 year old war vet, still tough as hell, but just, uh, I mean, he was just giving me, he was just giving me an opportunity. Yeah. So, um, I mowed his yard for $10. The, it was St. Augustine grass, so it was so thick and I couldn't push the mower. I had to pull the mower. <laughs> so, so it would take me all day to make, uh, I'd, I'd be pulling the mower, uh, it'd take me all day. And you didn't have a self-propelled. No, sir. No, sir. That was, dude, no, sir. Chris. Dad that, didn't buy that. That was our backyard coming up, dude. Damn right. Yeah. That St. Augustine, I mean, you'd have to take <laughs> more breaks. You're like, this yeah. is a, this will never be done. The mower just sits right into and it. And you can hear the summer. grass growing in the summertime here. So it's oh, like, yeah. Yeah, so um, I had, um, that was kind of my first job, and then kind of just started picking off um, a few more here and there that were close by in the neighborhood, and um, then high school came around, and once once I got my license, started expanding it a little bit more, and um, getting into different areas. We did a lot in um, Atlantic Beach, and um, so I got a trailer, actually worked on the trailer, um, Mm -hmm. at West Carteret from the Ag Mechanics Department. I was like, hey, let me get this trailer. And so they mm -hmm. hooked me up with it. And uh, I can I somehow convince Chris to uh, come That's help. That's Mr. Howell, right? Yep. 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 Giant. Seven foot four. <laughs> sure. Oh, wait. Was that Matt Howell when you were Matt there? Matt Howell, yeah. yeah. What, who was the, um, I had a guy. What? Glenn Howell. Mr. That's his uncle. Mm -hmm. I think. Got it. That's who Howell is the was man. There. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. But now you're doing now you're doing pressure washing. Yeah, so I convinced him to come help me out, and it was a terrible business model for myself. I was the owner and operator of it, and me and Chris were splitting everything 50 50. So <laughs> that's how you make a deal. Looking back, on it, Chris owes me a little bit of money. I mean, well, Mr. Mark was the funder. <laughs> oh no! Come on, now we funded it. He just he just <laughs> fixed everything. He just yeah. gave us the money. He just <laughs> made sure it like worked well enough for the next yard. He kept it running. Yeah. yeah, but now that's blossomed. You say you, you're a, you know you're official when you got a yeah. pocket tee. When you have a pocket tee with oh, your yeah. name on it. Yeah, yes, sir, baby. That's uh, legit. <laughs> so that, but so obviously you're working a federal job, mm -hmm. which is that's my nine to five. Pretty set in stone. Like when you have to clock in, clock out. And yes. Now you're doing pressure wash. Is that your round? Um. Yeah. Actually. Um. So I started the pressure washing business and. 2014 pretty much right after right after I graduated college um just started uh pressure washing houses here and there and um it's blossomed into I'd say a pretty successful side hustle right now yeah so um I would say that I do it maybe 10 months out of the year I kind of just started ramping it back up right now with um Damn January and February is cold as shit. Yeah, That's right. Uh, I take off December and uh, January, 
those months are kind of a no go for pressure washing. I kind of just sit back and enjoy enjoy the uh, holidays. Yeah, so. that's man, that's fun. It, it, that's a it's a. I remember you came and did my at, at my house. I was right. like, let me play around with it. it, it it's, it's a lot of fun. it's instant gratification. Same same with kind of mowing grass. Like right, there's a before after. Right. Yeah. And you've gotten started doing more social media stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. Um, I kind of use all the different platforms and just kind of trying to get my content out there, just so people can see. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like the most um, social media. Nah. No, person, but, you're, you're, but I mean, you do a good job on TikTok. You do a good job on Facebook. The, from what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I just uh, try and put my content out there so people can see. Mm-hmm. I mean. That's and bad. that's how you're. And getting, that is that's and that's what yeah. I wanted to get into is is the marketing side of things because you want to get those eyeballs on it. And right. You got to take every. I know Matt's right. not. Well, your job kind of doesn't allow you to go on social media, but. And I'm not a 15 year old girl, so I'm not on TikTok. Yeah, Dalton knows all the dances. No, <laughs> I do not know none of the dances. No, but I it, just post and ghost. Sure. It is a social media is the new. Well, I can't say it's new. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the, but it's the way to go when it comes to. I mean, in today's culture, that's the um, that's the apple of the eye. I mean, that's kind of what everybody's looking at, you know. So, if you're starting a business, I mean, it's pretty imperative that you get it out there. I mean, the two most important things in business are sales and marketing. That's what everybody says. <laughs> but, um, that's but, what they all tell but, me. That's what power, I've heard. Power washing is something that's visually. It's satisfying, yeah. right? It's great right. for those videos. If you're a, if yeah. you're a, an, an insurance salesman, for instance, it's like Not how do I make sexy. that interesting? You know, it's very abstract. Whereas yours, you can do a quick ten second, like mm-hmm. boom, boom. Look, it's a, it cool. almost shows us it's more of a tangible product. Yeah, yeah. We, you're on and that's it. what I that's what I enjoy most about it. Um, kind of we wanted to touch on this. Like my first job out of college was an absolute great job, and I was super fortunate of getting it. But um, it just wasn't extremely fulfilling, you know, and I didn't have a ton of passion in it. So that's kind of why I tried to, that's why I applied and went and got a new job. And so the current what, job. What was that first job? Uh, podcasting. <laughs> I was actually, a, I was a biologist. That's right. Noah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Which is different. I mean, yeah, yeah but it was a, it was a fantastic job. What did you um, graduate high, or college with? I did um, uh, environmental science. And business management. Huh. It's huge out, you and Chris, I mean, huge outdoor guys. Like, mm-hmm. Well, I just had to, um, what got me in the door with that is um, I had to take an internship course for summer. And I was playing with the Marlins. So I was like, hey, let me, um, I know this person might, uh, maybe they'll give me credit for it. So I called them and did... Um, I worked for them from like eight to twelve. Did you get stung by a bee during like the, the first summer? Day? <laughs> no, no, unpaid. <laughs> Let me say that unpaid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it might have been tough at the time, but uh, it got me in the door to a really good job. So, and I remember not to cut off Dalton. You might not remember telling me this. So part of Dalton's job was counting the otoliths. Yeah, the, not many people the know the fish rings yeah. than the ear. So like, how you count a fish's age? And how you count a tree's age are the exact same thing, the ring. Yes, very similar. So they conduct like age analysis to find um, whether stocks are healthy and stuff, if certain species are getting overfished. I didn't so. even know fish had ears. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> no, and like, but. It's was, like a bone in the ear yeah. that they kind of go with. What was, that, what was so damn funny about it? These things are tiny. Don, <laughs> he's Not counting like. Big he's ass counting like a. So they gave him like these little uh, tweezers or whatever to pick on it. Don just ended up just like taking his finger and just putting the <laughs> and then sliding it off. Like just so like, the ripples, and here you go. I have my ways. Fish. Yeah, I mean that shit cracked me up. So. But yeah, I got to um, I got I got to do a ton of fishing as well with it. So I thoroughly enjoyed that, and I definitely miss that getting paid to fish. That was nothing better than that. <laughs> those are the best working days ever <laughs> but um so then i made a career change and um got a federal job now which is uh, so top do you secret. Th- is that going to be your forever job or do you, um, do you see the pressure washing taking uh, 
like at some point the side hustle becomes the main hustle right and you at least given a you can make a choice yeah it's good to have choices with it but um honestly with the business model that i have for pressure washing i don't see me going full time with it if it possibly evolves into something else then it's like a good compliment maybe to what you're doing it's a yeah it's extremely good compliment because i don't want to be pressure washing every day yeah that'd be that'd be difficult and my i mean you got benefits and 401k and all that stuff to deal with so it's kind of smart and we talked before the show and tony robbins talks about this we but we all have a um, intrinsic need for simultaneously certainty and uncertainty mm -hmm. right right the, yeah. it's kind of like having a salary plus commission most people aren't built to be 100 percent commission right well, when you when you're got your own business i mean mm -hmm. that's eat what you kill you know yeah, it's, it's kind of nice to know look if I get blackballed in power washing, I've got this federal job. You know, it yeah. takes the pressure off. You can, yeah. you can be a little more bold. You can walk away from jobs because you're like, hey, I'm doing this because I want to, not necessarily because I have right. to. Right, 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 right. Um, but, yeah, I could see that maybe going into uh, like a coaching program or, or like here's how to start your own or mm -hmm. something. You know, yeah. yeah you you have to think about it. doing that, maybe writing like a proposal out for – And you have a good – because you – man, because you taught my son how to hit. Mm -hmm. You know, baseball. You, you were my my son's coach. Oh, you're talking about for baseball. Yeah, well, I'm talking about baseball business. I was saying he's got. You have yeah. multiple avenues that you can go. You can show someone how to. And I think they're all just interests, honestly. And I mean, I think it's, it's very like a important. Jobby. That's why I call it's it a job. It's a hobby yeah. that I get paid for. Yeah, nice. I was talking to B Billy earlier about it. You got to um, leverage your skills, and so what you're good at, you have to find a way to make that produce for you. Which we talked about. Be, yeah, be great at what you're good at. Exactly. And it's like, it really is what you're good at, but it's also like what you're naturally inclined to do. Right, right. What, and what, what you enjoy you, doing. Yeah. What you do when you're not thinking, if you can figure out how to make that your job. Right, right, right. Just makes life yeah. a lot. But mm -hmm. there's no, there's no um, need to hire Matt Dodge or need to hire Billy Collins. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, that's part of the game is like, here's what I like to do. Hmm, maybe that could mean marketing or Special washing or something, you, it's hard. There's no instructions for that. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoy it. I um, I do my nine to five job, nine to five job, and uh, line all of them up. And most most of the time, I might do one in the middle of the week, maybe one Friday afternoon, maybe two Saturday, and kind of just keep it rolling. Eventually, I'll get tired and hire some people once uh once summer comes around, it gets a little too hot for me. Dude, it would take us 12 hours to do a job. So yeah. we'd be like, do that again. We've got to set the camera up. All right. Let's go a little we need thumbnail. Check the levels of the bike. Yeah. We're getting like, to spray the house. B-roll. Yeah. Matt, we need B-roll. We're going viral, Dalton. We have three jobs today. What are you doing? Uh, and I get a lot of fulfillment, too, from like uh, from the people. I mean, I it's one of those amazing. Yeah. satisfaction things where, I mean, it's like a – before and after, Before that you're like, sure. oh man, this looks great. So, yeah. so you, really you seem, I've, well, I've known you for quite some time now too, but you're, you're not one that sits still. So what, do you see something past the pressure wash? Because I, I feel like you're you're going to have some other hustle. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, that's just, I think it's in all of our DNAs. We all want something extra to do, but. Um, yeah, I might dip my toe in real estate a little bit. I think that, um. I think a lot of successful people do that from what I hear. So buy it or sell it. Both. <laughs> buy it and sell. Buy low, sell, sell high. high. Damn right. Buy it, sell high. Do you want do you want to get into the actual buying of the real estate or do you want to do the real like estate broker. agent? Oh no, not not yeah. agent. I may I may take the course though one day. We'll yeah. See. I mean it's always good um, to have doing like but, um, rental property stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be tight. Maybe not so much rental properties just because it seems like a lot of maintenance it's a lot so, of work but if you had to write a letter to 18 year old dalton what would that letter be mm. um that'd be a ton of, that'd be a long letter probably and would he read it uh he'd probably read half of it <laughs> <laughs> probably read the first half of it um advice i would give to 18 year old dalton would be to um whenever you get your job definitely invest in your 401k and invest in your retirement accounts. Start that early. Um, don't 
show off and try and buy drinks for everybody at the bar. If <laughs> if somebody comes up and asks you for a drink, you buy them a drink, but don't feel like it's necessary for you to buy <laughs> everyone's drink. Colin's the cheapest motherfucker. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not trying to be cheaper in other words. Um, other advice, um, I wouldn't change anything really with baseball, but I would just um, say to stay persistent. Almost more like a firm, like, hey, dude, yeah, just keep at like, it. Like, you're going to do, you're, it's keep, gonna work keep out. your head out of trouble. I mean, don't do drugs. Um, don't drink and drive. Um, and stay out of trouble. Stay out of jail. Yeah. So that's pretty much what I'd say. And so, for any 18 year old kid. So, another uh, um, kind of add on to that question, we always talk about look, in life, you don't get what you want, you get what you are, right? You, you, your world around you is kind of a reflection of who you are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and let's, we all have this bigger image of ourself, you know. Billy's got a bigger image of himself, the things he wants to accomplish. And same, same with mine. We've got goals and things like that. Um, so let's pretend five years from now, right? Dalton's accomplished every goal. You know, he's whatever is in your mind right now, of what you want. Mm-hmm. And that's unique to you, right? There's nothing I can, I'm not trying to influence that one way or other. But let's pretend that Dalton had a time machine showed up right here. What would he tell you? What would the guy five years, what like, would Dalton five years from now be telling me? The, yeah. the ideal Dalton. So, mm. so more kind of forward thinking um, exercise. Um, I think I'd probably tell myself to keep staying persistent and keep trying to be the best person that I can be. And I mean, um, kind of, don't get greedy in certain scenarios when you have the opportunity to do something really good. Take it. Um, like be willing. Yeah. Be willing. Basically being humble and hungry. I'm kind of thinking of like stock prices and stuff like that. Yeah. Dalton's like going back trade. to the future. He's like, like, like sports <laughs> betting. <laughs> that's, like, that's exactly He's like, like, hey, back to the bet, bet the house on the break. I'm looking back <laughs> at all of my mistakes. <laughs> but no, I, I like thinking of that more mm-hmm. um, because you can only take people as far as you've come. That makes sense, right? So if you have mm-hmm. a teacher, your teacher can only take you as far as they've come. Um, but with this, it kind of gets rid of all that because mm-hmm. and it comes down to the, the power of our imagination, right? We are using our imagination for the past. And that's why eyewitness testimony is so unreliable in court because people, they rewrite it in their head. They, right. five people can see right. the same thing and they've got five different recounts, but you use your imagination for the future too. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I like that question. It's, it is a great question because it also puts you in that. I have if I could go back to goals. 18, I would tell myself not to gain so much weight <laughs> after my sophomore year of college. By buying drinks for yeah. everyone. Stay, college athletes, stay in your athletic shape. Fun tip. Lay off the fire water. Yeah. Fire water. <laughs> well, man, and fireball. This has been a blast, man. Yeah, it's been fun. You have a good time? Had a great time. I want to keep it rolling. <laughs> keep They're cutting it. me off over here. <laughs> no, you guys can keep going. I'm we just we created an animal. No, you got you guys do it. Keep they got rolling, babies to deal with. They got to get home. Me and Chris are going to close the place though. Don't, don't catch a KID. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but man, yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, see, thanks so see much big, for coming and sitting. Big things and in, big things in your future, man. So yeah, pleasure hanging out with you guys. And uh, till next time. Till next time, guys. Do us a huge favor. Hit the subscribe button. Smash the like button. And we'll see you on the next video. Smash it.